Hey, Ms. Paul. Hi, sorry. Hi, um, I'm interested in medicine as well. Nice to meet everyone. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I can go next. Hi, everyone. My name is Christelle, and I'm also interested in um, the medicine route, either DO or just medical school in general. Okay, perfect. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly, and I am also interested in medicine. Thank you. Okay. Did we get everyone? Okay. So the reason why this is important for me to know right up front is that we have two separate post back programs. Okay. So we have one that is for um, pre-medicine or pre-medical and pre-dentistry. And then we have another program. It's separate. You apply separately um, and it's structured a little bit differently. And that's for PA, PT, and OT. So it sounds like all of you are in the right spot because we're going to do the pre-medical, pre-dental one right now. That's what we're gonna go through. Okay, all right. So I have a bunch of stuff to talk to you about today. If you have any questions, feel free to just throw something in the chat or honestly even interrupt me. We're a very small group. Um, so um, you know, don't feel weird about doing that, okay? All right, so I'm gonna give you an overview of our program. We're gonna talk about the coursework and the timeline, the criteria for admission, the application process, and then the cost and financial aid. Okay, here we go, our overview. Okay, so this program is for people who are considered career changers, okay? So what does that mean? That means that um, our applicants typically do not have uh, bachelor's degrees in the hard sciences, okay? So most of the people in our program haven't taken any, if, um, or maybe just a few, but most of them haven't taken any science courses, okay? So they're doing their entire, um, all of their prereqs here at LMU in this program. Now, as I mentioned before, this is for students wanting to go into medicine or dentistry. On a rare occasion, we will have somebody who's interested in veterinary medicine and we can accommodate those, um, those applicants as well, okay? All right, so people on our team, we have a whole team of people here um, that are in health professions kind of advising. So I'm the director of the program. Um, we also have Greg James who works in career and professional development. And we have Karen Valencia who is the coordinator. So basically if you are to email our general email, um, which is postback at lmu.edu, if you have any questions after this, that's where you will want to go. Karen um, or I will be responding to you, okay? So, um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Greg's role as we move on, all right. Okay, so the thing with LMU is, you know, the probably the number one um, thing that I hear from applicants about why they chose to apply to LMU, and that's the small class size, okay? so. We only have about 14 to 19 students in labs. Um, all labs are in person, so um, that's relatively new, but um, very, you know, very small groups. So what does that do? That allows you to get to know your professors, right? Which is important because, um, I mean, obviously for learning reasons, but you're also gonna need these professors um, to write letters of recommendation for you, okay? so. Two science faculty uh, are required. Uh, those letters of recommendation are required when you go to medical school. So these, this small environment gives you a chance to really get to know them and for them to get to know you, okay? So we have the Life Sciences Building. Um, it's, it's actually been renamed recently to the Featherson Life Sciences Building. It is beautiful. If you've never been, um, it is totally worth a walk around. Um, it's basically a state-of-the-art facility. And another thing that people really like when they come here is that we offer free tutoring for the basic science courses. So for students who haven't taken any, you know, biology since high school, this is, this is pretty important, right? So free tutoring for biology, chemistry, and physics, and uh, math too, okay? Okay, if you haven't been to campus, uh, it is really beautiful here, right? So a couple couple shots. So Hannon Library, um, nice view there if you're going to be studying, and then um, the ocean view from campus because we're, we're super close to the beach. 
All right. So one of the perks of being in this program is that we offer a committee letter service. Okay. So what is a committee letter? So L, um, the committee letter is our LMU's recommendation of you as an applicant to medical school. Okay. So it is written by our health professions advisory committee, which is made up of uh, myself. And then we have faculty in the sciences and math that are also part of this, um, of this committee. And so we all work on this committee letter process together, okay, with our students. So as part of this committee letter, um, you would get a mock interview with a science faculty member. Um, we will review, like our office will review your entire application before you submit it. So um, when you think it's perfect, when you think your AMCAS or a COMAS application is perfect, we're going to look at it and, you know, do a second pair of eyes, just catching all those typos, any grammatical errors, that type of thing. Uh, we submit all of your letters of recommendation for you. So the way that it works is that just because we have a committee letter service doesn't mean that you don't get other letters of recommendation. Okay, you still have to collect those letters, um, but your committee letter will go on top of all of those letters in one packet. And then I will submit all of your letters for you. Okay, so it does, you know, there's a lot to do when you go to apply and this is kind of nice that this is something that you don't really need to worry about, okay? And let's see. And then, of course, I am there, you know, supporting coaching throughout the process. Um, even if you were to complete our program and take a gap year or even two gap years, and then you want to come back and work with me on the committee letter service, that's totally okay. All right. So once you're an LMU student, you're in our program, you're kind of an LMU student forever. Okay. Even if you're alum. All right. Couple other perks. So I teach a couple classes called Health Professions Advising One and Two. So these are free. You don't have to pay for them, but they are a required part of the program. And so students take them in their first and second semester. So fall and spring, okay, LMU. So some of the things that we go over, we talk about interviewing, we talk about personal statements. Um, a draft of your personal statement is actually due to me at the end of your fall semester. So you're really already working on your application like right away. So um, that also relieves a little bit of pressure toward the end, okay, when you go to apply. I already mentioned handling letters of recommendation. Um, I talked to you about the other letters that you need to get. So the science faculty, you know, working with maybe getting one from an MD, that type of thing, okay? Uh, MD versus DO. I usually have somebody come in and talk about MCAT test taking strategies. We typically will have a research panel. So um, LMU does have research opportunities for students. And so we typically will have some faculty members come in and talk about research. Um, financing, how do you finance health professional school? And then at the very end, the very last session of every spring, we have um, what I call a newly admitted panel. So this is uh, a group of post -bac students who just got in to medical school and they're gonna talk to you about um, their entire journey, okay? So that's always kind of a fun session. <clears throat> okay. We do programming out of my office, all right? So in the past, you know, the pandemic completely upended this, but we were doing mock MMIs with students. And so that was actually pretty popular. Um, an MMI, just so you know, if you're not familiar with it, it's called a multiple mini interview. So some medical schools like to utilize this format when, uh, you know, when reviewing applications, okay? Um, so basically it's a series of usually 10 minute interviews that you have to do back to back to back. Okay. And a lot of them are ethical questions, that type of thing. All right. Um, admissions panels. So we have, um, uh, admissions deans and directors from around the country come to LMU every year and talk about what they look for in applicants. And so that's always really helpful. Um, we set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with some of these admissions officers. So, you know, if you had already applied, if you're thinking about applying, you can kind of bring your little portfolio in and talk to them or your resume or something and talk to them about um, any gaps that they see in a um, potential successful application to their school. Um, summer activities panels. So we've had students come and talk about things that they've done in the summer. And then every other year, I believe, 
um, Greg's office, Greg James's office over in career and professional development, they do a graduate and health professions fair. And so that's another opportunity for our students to talk to some of the um, admissions representatives. Okay, statistics. So everybody likes to know this one. So this last year, 20, um, 2020, 2021, we had 85 applicants to our program. We accepted 45. Um, our final cohort was 27 plus three deferrals. So we do allow deferrals. So if you're admitted to our program and you decide, I would like to start the following year, we're okay with that, okay? So, um, so yeah, 27 plus three deferrals. Um, that's generally a little bit bigger than our usual class. Usually we have, you know, around 20 to 25, so. So in 2021, this last year, nationwide 39% of applicants that applied to medical school were admitted. Now this is, I mean, it's pretty rough sounding statistic and it definitely is, um, but during this last year, there were more applicants that, I mean, more people applied to medical school across the country than, I mean, than I've ever seen. So typically, usually around 50,000 people apply. This year, this last year, 60,000 people applied. So I don't know what this looks like for the future. I mean, none of us really know what's happening um, with COVID and how it's going to affect things in the future, right? But um, typically nationwide, um, you know, about 42 to 44% of applicants are admitted. So it's not that much better, but it's a little better. All right, in 2020, so um, oh, nobody here is pre-dental, so I'm not even going to go through that. Um, of the students that applied to medical or dental school from our post -bac program, historically 74% are admitted each year. Um, now this goes back to the very beginning of our program, which started about 11 years ago, okay? Now the last couple of years of the students who, went, who applied to medical school, 87% were admitted. So, um, so we've done pretty well these last couple of years. Okay, <clears throat> coursework and timeline. Typical coursework, all right, um, that you would take here at LMU, we're looking at general biology one and two with the labs, general chemistry one and two uh, with labs, OCHEM one and two with labs, physics, that includes, uh, labs are included in physics, biochemistry, um, which is upper division course, and then calculus for life sciences. So, the, um, and I'm gonna go through the requirements for our program in a second. Um, we do require pre-calculus, um, but I strongly recommend that you get calculus out of the way before you start school here. Um, so calculus is just, um, it's an additional class that if you're on our short 14 month program, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, adding another you know tough math class on top of all the science classes, um, Honestly, it gets really tough. So I always encourage people to try and get, uh, get that out of the way before they start here at LMU. Okay. All right, so I just mentioned the 14 month timeline. This is our flagship program, okay? This is, you know, 11 years ago when we began this program, this is, you know, what we've always done, 14 months, okay? So what does that look like? So what that means is that you would start in summer session one, which is mid-May to the end of June, and you do chemistry. And then you would do the um, second summer session, you would do chemistry, um, you know, this uh, Gen Chem 2 with lab. Typically, I do not recommend that students do much else other than just kind of eat, sleep, and breathe chemistry, okay? So it's very intense, those classes. Um, you know, they take a normal 16 week semester and they condense it down to like five weeks. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty intense. <clears throat> okay, fall, uh, you would be doing OCHEM, general biology, general physics. Then if you hadn't done calculus, you'd be throwing calculus on top of that, which again, I said is, you know, um, pretty tough. And then you would be doing my class, health professions advising. Um, in the spring, it's the second set of all of those classes you did in the fall. And then for summer one, you would do um, biochemistry and you would end the program in June and then you would apply to medical school after that, okay? 
So optional coursework, let's say you've come in with a couple of these classes already, there's flexibility here, right? So um, statistics is definitely a course that I recommend. It's helpful for the MCAT and some schools wanna see, just wanna see it. So um, recommend statistics. Then there's general psychology and principles of sociology. So these are mostly recommended for the MCAT. Um, although some schools do want to see some type of, you know, behavioral um, class on your transcript. Um, at, but at no schools that I know of are either of these classes required. They're just recommended. Okay. Um, then we have some classes that are recommended for the pre-dental students. And then there are some upper division courses that our students have been allowed into. Um, we guarantee, and I think I have this on another slide, we guarantee that you will get the classes that you need to complete the program, okay? Um, what we can't guarantee is um, upper division courses. So you would um, meet with the chair of the department, usually the biology department, and talk about if there's, if there's room in those classes. Um, typically our students do get in, but I, can't, I just can't guarantee, okay? All right, so what does this timeline look like? So, what I recommend is beginning to start studying for the MCAT in fall semester, okay? Um, kind of taking like the long view on studying for the MCAT. And so since our students mostly haven't taken any science classes, then I recommend starting with CARS, okay? So that's basically the, um, you know, reading comprehension, you read a passage, answer some questions about the passage. Um, so recommend doing that. You don't need any science background to start studying for CARS. Um, looking at the other sections in January, okay? So what does that mean? That's gonna be as you're studying for the MCAT, you're reviewing some material that you have already learned in the program. And then you're also co-studying as you're learning, um, you know, the second class, you know, OCHEM 2 and uh, Gen Physics 2. So you're co-studying, okay? Um, you would end up taking the MCAT at the end of June or early July. You would apply for medical school right after the exam. Following that, there's always a gap year, okay? It takes a full year to apply to medical school. And so in that year, you're gonna be doing what are called secondary essays. So every school, almost every school is going, after they get your primary application, they're going to um, send a request or invite you to do secondaries, okay? So these are just um, additional essay questions. Uh, you're, hopefully you'll be doing interviews and then additional extracurricular activities. Um, during your gap year, you're going to have an opportunity to do update letters to medical schools. And so you can, um, you know, if you're continuing to do it, to do extracurricular activities, then you can inform the medical schools as they're making decisions about interviews and um, whatnot. Um, you can inform them along the way. And then you would matriculate the following fall, okay? So that would be, you know, you would apply end of June, matriculate August of the following year, okay? Okay, so individualized advising. So all that is really nice and everything, but not everybody fits that perfect mold, right? So um, your personal schedule will depend on the prior coursework that you've taken and the needs of each student. All right, so we can adjust this program too um, to do a part more of a part time program. So, you know, starting the same time, right, starting in May, but you would end the following December. And so, what that would do is push back your application year um, by, by one year. But for some people, that really works out, right? So, if you're somebody that's coming in without a lot of extracurricular activities and you need that extra time, then being on a little bit of a longer program is probably what I would recommend for you, okay? Um, also, you know, occasionally we get students who are, um, you know, just finishing up their bachelor's degree at, let's say, a UC where they're on the quarter system. And so, of course, they can't start in May, right? Because they don't get done until June. So those people, those students would start in fall and then they would continue until the end of December the following year. So we can, you know, figure out everybody's situation and make it work for them, okay? So eight courses are needed to complete the certificate and qualify for a committee letter. And then I already mentioned this, advising continues into your gap year, okay, and beyond. 
right. We do have a linkage agreement with Western University of Health Sciences and their Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine program. So the way that this program is set up, it is for students who want on the longer program. Okay, students are on the 20 month program. Um, it requires a 3.5 cumulative and science GPA, and then a 500 on the MCAT, which is, you know, that's actually pretty reasonable. Um, so the GPA that they're looking at is, um, like I said, undergraduate GPA, your post back grades factor into your undergraduate GPA. Okay, so if you're somebody who's maybe not, you know, came in a little bit lower um, on the GPA side of things, uh, hopefully if you come in and really slay the post back program, then that's going to raise your cumulative um, GPA. Okay, and then if you haven't done any science classes um, really in the past, then um, everything that you do in the post back program is going to be towards your science GPA. Okay. Most people who come here do tend to do well in the program. Um, okay, so let's see. Okay, criteria for admission into our program. Okay, so you need to have a bachelor's degree from a US accredited school, that's a hard requirement. Um, we're looking for career changers, like I mentioned before, which means you have a degree outside of the hard, hard sciences. Do we make exceptions to this sometimes? Occasionally we do. Um, but for the most part, we're looking for career changers. A college level pre-calculus course or higher is required. So if you have calculus on your transcript, that's fantastic. You don't need to do a pre-calculus course. Um, but if you came in with calculus AP, then that's not gonna count, okay? So medical schools um, are not, typically not really um, interested in APs, okay? So we need to have a, um, an actual class, a college level class on a transcript. And so this is also stuff, I know this can get kind of nuanced, but um, and vary depending on the individual, but this is stuff that I can advise you on. Um, minimum overall GPA is, of 3.3 is very, very strongly recommended. So we're looking um, for people who we have, we really, believe have a good shot of getting into medical school. And so one of those things is a um, you know 3.3 or higher GPA. Like I said, semester of calculus strongly recommended. And then a demonstrated passion for medicine um, that you have demonstrated through extracurricular activities. Uh, this is important too. So I mean, I feel like this is an ethical, an ethical thing on our part. So we are admitting people who um, I mean we're not a degree program, we're a certificate program for, you know, one, one thing only, which is to try to get you on the path to get into medicine. And so as we're reviewing applications to this program, we want to know that that's what you really want to do with your life. And, um, you know, we'd like to have you to demonstrate that to us. Okay. Okay. So what are these extracurricular activities that I'm talking about? So, uh, there are four for applying to medical school, four kind of buckets. So you need to get some clinical um, experience. Uh, you also need to get some service and volunteer experience. So these are, these are different, okay? So by service, I mean community service. So, you know, volunteering with Meals on Wheels, like working at a homeless shelter, something along those lines. Clinical experience, of course, is, you know, dealing with patients working in a hospital or clinical setting. Also leadership experience and research. So I already mentioned before that uh, we do have some research opportunities here. The way that it works is that um, students have to network with the faculty to see who has spots available. So unfortunately, they don't give me a list of um, you know, spots open in their lab, but our faculty tend to be really friendly. And so, you know, our students network with them. Um, leadership experience. Now this doesn't have to be like, I was a manager of blah, 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 or, you know, um, anything with an official title like that. So sometimes we have people who have teaching experience, uh, like TA experience, who have been tutors, um, at LMU, our clubs are really popular. And so we have students that have been on the, um, the leadership team of the different clubs, like on um, the executive board. And so all of that stuff counts as research. 
ROS leadership. Okay. All right, application process. Applications are open now. Um, they opened on October 15th. We actually already have applicants. Um, and they close on Valentine's Day, so February 14th. I encourage everybody to apply early. So we admit our applicants on a rolling basis, right? And um, I had mentioned before that we're looking for, you know, a cohort that's in the like 20 to 25 range. And so, um, you know, there's going to be a point where, you know, maybe we have already filled up, um, you know, all the, the entire class already. So you want to get your application in early. Okay. And then some parts of the application that I think are important that I just wanted to kind of touch on a little bit more. So recommendations. So one recommendation letter is required. You can have more if you want, okay? But one is required. We prefer that it is somebody who has, um, has taught you. So, you know, a faculty member that can speak to your, um, your academic prowess, okay? That's our preference. Now, we also understand that as a career changer program, we have a lot of applicants who have been out of school for a while, right? So they might have lost touch, maybe they lost touch with their instructors. So in that case, you know, we'll take a, um, you know, a supervisor, maybe a job that you had or something along those lines. Um, experiences, achievements. So I do wanna point out that um, we require in the post cast application that you submit your resume or your CV. But what I, um, don't want people to do is to shortchange the experiences and achievements section, okay? So in the experiences section, it really gives you an opportunity to give us more detail about everything that you did, right? A lot more than like a resume would. Um, so we like to see that kind of level of detail. So some people kind of blow that off a little bit. We don't really like that, okay? Tell us as much as you can about the things that you have done. Your personal statement, um, okay, why medicine? Like, why, why do you wanna go into medicine? So I know that this is a, um, it's a big question, it's vague, um, I understand that. And this is, you know, once you're in the program, we really kind of work on, um, you know, what that means to you and really try and um, kind of hone in on that. But um, we want students to start practicing, talking about why they wanna go into the fields. And then also why LMU, okay? So why do you want to come to our school? Um, so maybe it's some of the, um, you know, some of the things that I went through in this PowerPoint, um, you know, small class sizes, um, that type of thing. Um, maybe it's that you feel you really relate to the mission of the school, which, you know, you can, you know, obviously find on the website. Um, but why are you choosing to apply to us? That's, a, that's very important to us, okay? All right, <clears throat> application timeline. Once your application is complete, we're gonna, you know, we do rolling admissions, like I said, we're gonna take a look at it. Um, not everybody, some people are gonna be invited to do an interview via Zoom. At this point, it's going to be via Zoom. Um, that could change. I mean, again, you know, of course we don't know, pandemic, whatever, but um, we might start doing in-person interviews if people want to do an in-person interview in the spring or early, you know, January, February. Um, so we're gonna play that by ear, but Zoom is always gonna be an option, okay? Um, let's see, I already talked about that. So another kind of pitch from me to you about applying early is that, you know, if you apply on Valentine's Day when the application is due, it's gonna take us a little bit of time because a lot of people apply then. It's gonna take us time to go through it and then call you in for an interview, which might not happen until March. Well, in April, students already start enrolling in courses, right? So if you're somebody that happens to be, you know, not local to LMU, then you're gonna to have to deal with moving and all this stuff too. So it's kind of a lot to do at the last minute. Um, and in May, of course, I've said this before, courses begin. So usually they uh, begin around like May 14, 15. And then cost and financial aid. So this year, this current year, um, 2021, the total cost of our program for about nine to 10 courses, which is what people mostly end up taking, um, is about 35 to 38,000. 
Now this, um, this is going to change for the upcoming year. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. We haven't um, you know, fully decided um, how much the increase is going to be, but they, I can tell you that there will be an increase and it's probably gonna be in the neighborhood of eight to 10%, okay? Um, if you have questions about financial aid, um, I am not in the financial aid business and I uh, kind of don't want to be because there's so many nuances and it's very complicated and um, we have professionals that deal with this. So the professional that deals with it in the financial aid office just for post -bac students in our post -bac program, her name's Jennifer Bond. Um, she would be very happy to answer any questions that you might have about financial aid for this program. Okay. okay. That is the last slide. That is our email. So if you have questions again after we get off this, um, you know, this Zoom meeting, then that's where you would, you know, just send us a message. But I'm going to open up, open it up right now to uh, anybody that has any questions for me. Hi, I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm wondering if it is possible to work full time during this. I know you recommend um, spending the majority of your focus on these difficult classes, but um, for some of us that might not be a possibility to not work during this time. I'm wondering if you had any students do this before. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the question. So, you know, like I said, we do have the ability to stretch the program out. And so, you know, one of the things I talked about is moving up from 14 months to 20 months. Um, I've had students that even need to stretch it out a little bit farther. So in that sense, we're flexible, right? We wanna work with our students. The problem that comes in is that um, all of our classes are during the day, okay? Some of them, like a lab might occasionally go into the evening, um, but usually that is <clears throat> doesn't work with people who need to work full time, unfortunately. And I had mentioned before that we will guarantee that you will get the classes that you need to complete this program and move through it, okay? But what we can't guarantee is that you're gonna be able to take them at the time that you want to take them, okay? So, um, so it is a little bit, it's a little bit difficult for, um, you know, students who are um, fully employed. So most people would end up going down to part-time um, in that case, so. Anybody else? Um, I had a question too. Sure. Okay, so I'm supposed to be doing like this shadowing program, but it's like online. Is that okay? Like, yeah, yeah, it is okay. I mean, before the pandemic, would it have been okay? No, it wouldn't have. They want you to do in person stuff. Um, but the online shadowing has gotten really popular, you know, because people just weren't able to get the clinical experience. So up until this time, yeah, absolutely. It is, um, you can definitely do that, so. Okay. All right, other questions? Is there um, the possibility to not take the gap year after um, kind of like work and take the MCAT as we're taking these classes? Yeah, so not really, no, because okay. all of the classes that you're taking are, you know, topics that are going to be on the MCAT. And so you want to, um, you know, have the best MCAT score that you possibly can. What you would be talking about in that situation is actually applying before you even took any of these science classes. Um, and so you don't want to do that because everybody that is applying is, um, you know, has already done all of those. And so you wouldn't be competitive if you applied too early. Gotcha. Thanks. Sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let um, I'm going to let you go, but I'm going to stick around in case somebody has a question that they you know would rather just talk to me about. Um, but otherwise, I really appreciate you coming by, and I hope to see your application sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.